how to run PHP unit tests in Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.440.2. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has both PHP installed on it and PHP unit. There's also a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. So let's go and take a look at the sample repository. What we have is our Jenkins file, a source directory that has two files in it, and also a test directory that has one file in it, which is our test. Now, where did these files come from? I'm basing these examples on the official documentation of getting started with PHP unit. Now, in this case, it's actually PHP unit 11. Now, what I did is I downloaded the PHP archive version of PHP unit. So I did the wget, I did shmod on the PHP unit, and then check the version. Now we're gonna be checking our versions in just a moment in our pipeline. And then for my code and test code, if you take a look at what's in my repository, it's exactly the same as what we see here for email and email test PHP. Now the next section is test execution. We'll look at these commands in a moment in our Jenkins file, but one thing that's key part here, you notice that it's calling out source autoload PHP. When I created my repository, I ran the command for phpab and it generated my auto load into my source directory. Now, as we go through the examples here, what we'll see is we'll also test out test docs so we can see what the output looks like within our Jenkins command. And then we'll also do one other test that's a little more native to what we're used to seeing maybe in Jenkins. So let's go ahead and go back over to our sample repository and review our Jenkins file. So we'll take a look at our Jenkins file. What we see here is the very first stage is verify the installation. So we're gonna be verifying the installation of PHP and also the version of PHP unit. Next up, thinking back to what we just saw on the official documentation, we're gonna run PHP unit bootstrap source autoload PHP tests. That's exactly the same as what we see right here. PHP unit bootstrap source autoload PHP tests. The next up, we're gonna run the exact same thing again, but we're going to include the test docs option. So again, exactly the same as the first one, but including test docs. And then finally, in the last stage, we're gonna be outputting the test output into JUnit format. That way we can go ahead and bring back into our Jenkins controller and then save our test results back into our job run. So we'll do PHP unit bootstrap log JUnit, specify the file where we want that log information to be. And then finally, we'll take anything that's inside of target, star.xml, and feed it into our JUnit step. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller and let's run our PHP unit job. This job has been set up and is now pointing at the Jenkins file. So we'll go into it and click on build now. If we take a look at the output for our job, what we can see here, let's start from the top. We can see PHPv is our PHP version 8.3.4. We can see our PHP unit version is 11.1.1. .1. So when we run our very first test, we actually have two tests. They both passed, but we can see the indicator is two dots. Not very useful. Now, if we go ahead and go back into the next stage, which was where we were calling test docs, not only do we see our two dots, but we also get information from our test docs output. Can be created from a valid email, cannot be created from an invalid email. So again, everything is fine there. Finally, we get down to the last one where we're logging out our JUnit results. Since we're not passing in test docs, we don't see the extra documentation within the run, but we do see that we are recording our test results. So how do we double check that? Let's go ahead and click on number one, which is our build run. Then we can click on either test result in the body or test result on the left nav. That'll take us into our test results for this job run. If we click into root and email test, we can see our two different tests that both passed. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.